I think we'll go ahead and get started at this uh, this high school 101 course we're going to take. I'm Carl Wagner, your uh, new principal, and um, we uh, we have some distinguished guests here with us this evening. And um, and again, um, our campus uh, goals this year is to really ramp up our transition, not just from our fifth to sixth grade. Uh, move, but also from our eighth to ninth grade move. And um, we want to, when you guys go to Stony Point or whatever high school you're going to, we want to make sure that A, you're ready. Uh, this is truly the transitional uh, grade level uh, middle school. And we want to make sure again that you're ready for high school. And one of our first steps to high school is to, uh, is to talk about what's over there. I mean, you have guys have an idea. You've been over maybe to Stony Point, or you have brothers and sisters that go there. But you know, just exactly what is this high school experience all about? Because eighth graders, it's it's going to start getting real serious real soon. And and I don't think you can you can be um, prepared too early for that big step because it's uh, it's certainly important. I've invited. Uh, the five academy directors over at Stony Point uh, with us. I've also invited City uh, Gardner, who will be doing a, an overview of high school, high school 101, uh, what's going on over there. And I also invited our international baccalaureate uh, program director with us, as well as the um, ROTC uh, leader. So you're going to get a wide range of, of options. Um, you're going to hear about that tonight. You're going to hear a brief presentation of each academy. And then at the conclusion of this, of this event, uh, we're going to retire to the lower commons where you can ask more specific questions regarding each academy. And uh, these academy directors have brought students with them. Many of them attended Hopewell Middle School. And they're coming back to tell you guys as eighth graders what's ahead and what's in store for you. And it's really, really cool and it's really exciting. Might be a little scary, but it is really, you're really in for a treat. So without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Cindy Gardner. And Cindy is, Cindy is again, the uh, CTE Academy Director, but she also is sort of like the team lead for all these guys over here. I don't know if, if she was elected or appointed or what, but, but here she is. And so, with, uh, please give Cindy a round of applause. Hi. Uh, as you may know, uh, we took your principal from last year to Stony Point, so we're very excited to have Anthony Watson as our principal at Stony Point, and things are hopping over there, as you can imagine, it's very well. Um, how many of you have children that are in high school now? It's okay. I'm sorry, I didn't see. Do we have many? We have some. Okay. How many? Uh, do any of you have ninth graders there? Okay, a couple of them. I never know where to start. I think where I want to start is academies at Round Rock. What are academies, the history of academies at Round Rock, ISD, and build into where we are today, and then we have something new that's been added by the, our lovely te Texas legislature, who are always doing wonderful things for us. But this one I think is pretty cool. It's called House Bill 5. Has anyone heard of House Bill 5? Okay, one hand. Well, that's okay. Um, I am going to tie, talk to you about academies and how they feed into what House Bill 5 is expecting. I am not a counselor, so I won't be asking, answering specific questions about graduation credits and, and things like that. You have two wonderful counselors here, um, both, oh good, we have one more academy lead who has just shown up, which is great. Um, both Mari and Michael are your counselors here. They'll be talking to you and preparing your children to enter Stony Point. We have some wonderful counselors at Stony Point who will also be coming and meeting individually with your students and the parents too to make sure everything's lined up. They'll get into all of those details 
a lot more than I will tonight, so I'm going to give you just a snippet of their piece and a bit piece of what are academies. So, the academies at Round Rock. And let me get my... You wouldn't need to come on. So Round Rock ISD has always had five academies offered, but not all high schools have all five academies. Now, starting this, this year, this current year, all five high schools have all five academies. And within each academy, so we, you can see what they named. We've renamed them. If you were familiar, if you had students that were high school students before, we've renamed some of the academies to match the endorsement areas of House Bill 5. And we start using the vocabulary, just like we do in the classroom. We kind of use the vocabulary, explain the definition, and then we use it in the context. So House Bill 5 has named certain endorsement areas. So instead of confusing people with, oh, is that an academy or an endorsement, we're trying to combine them. So we're saying the same thing uh, about these titles. So these are the five academies at Stony Point High School at this time, as well as the other four high schools. Next slide, please. Okay, why do we have academies? Um, we want to personalize the students' experience in high school and, pre and prepare with high school being, thank you so much, high school being the beginning, the end of high school is the beginning, not the end. As we all know, every level that you go through any type of school is always preparing you for the next level. Um, many, we ask their students to choose an academy slash endorsement before they enter high school. And the concern of many parents is that I have been a 14 year old, 15 year old, they don't know what they want to do the rest of their life. This isn't a signed contract that they have to do this the rest of their life. It's more an exposure to if they're interested in engineering or they're interested in architecture or they think they might like health science, let's start taking those courses in high school and discover if A, they love it and they keep going, or B, maybe better for your pocketbook, they say, ooh, I don't want to do that, I'm just changing my mind now before you're paying for college, and figuring that out. They are not stuck in anything they do. They can do this in ninth grade and change their mind. There are procedures to follow now in hospital five, but it is possible. They can do two or even three academies, depending on what what their schedules look like. And, and we can talk more in depth about what that looks. So it is still about choice. It is supporting, it is personalizing them. So when they go to math and science and English and social studies and they say, well, why am, why am I learning this? We can say, well, if you're going to be in health science, you should learn this piece of science or this piece of math. And we try to tie their core curriculum to their uh, career interest area. I think I hit all of that. Yes, that works. So the components that are comprised of a model academy, we're shooting, always shooting to be a model academy, which is across the United States. There are many academies and different ways of structuring those academies throughout the United States. Um, in Round Rock, this is how we do that. The, the first piece is a small learning community, which is basically like your team in an eighth grade. We have 8 one, eight two, eight three. I think Mari is in the how that your teaming is done in eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth grade. They don't have teaming? Okay. Not this year. Some of some the middle schools do that. So that if you're in the Health Science Academy, that when you go to math class, your Algebra 1 or your Geometry class, the goal is that all the other students in that class would also be Health Science students so that the teacher could teach that subject through the lens of that career area. Now that's not, that's in a perfect world, and we are nowhere near that perfect world. This is the hardest piece of the entire thing to do with scheduling it, um, right now. And in fact, Stony Point is not doing that this year. I know Cedar Ridge is doing their Health Science Academy that way, and some of the other high schools are doing, no, Cedar Ridge is doing the Visual Performing Arts, and the others are doing Health Science, some of them. But we're working toward that so that we can schedule your child into classes with like-minded. Just like when you go to a university, you go into the College of Business, and hopefully the majority of classes you take are with other students taking a business students. Now, you certainly will go into another part of the university to take a course that's offered outside of the college that you're in. Does you follow, you, you follow what I'm saying? 
Um, so there are general classes if there are uh, if they're in a foreign language that crosses all academies, obviously, and things like that. So that's the hardest part is the smaller learning community. But that is a goal that is Round Rock has been working toward. The second is the college and the career prep. Um, these are not vocational classes of back in the day. These are college preparatory classes. Many, many of our Academy courses earn articulated credit, which are, if you want more detail about what articulated versus dual credit is, I can talk to you more about what that is. But they do earn typically uh, ACC credit for that, but sometimes it is through other colleges as well. Um, that, so they are a very rigorous coursework is to be expected. For instance, to enter the STEM into engineering or the computer science, it is required to have Algebra 1 before you take the first class, unless you have teacher approval. So we don't, this, these are not just the blow-off classes, but typically students walk in those classes and they're excited about what they're learning, so they're not hard to them, if that makes sense. And then the third thing we, we do very well at uh, Stony Point, as well as the other schools, is our partnerships. And we would draw on your experience too. So if you are currently in an industry and can speak to our students about that industry, why you chose it, why, what did you do to get there, what advice would you be given to support a student's decision making towards that career, that is a big partnership. We also take students to different events, to different tours. Uh, we have partners, we have advisory committees for each of our program areas. Those are growing. Um, I just was at the business and industry one uh, a week or so ago, and those partners are so excited to come talk to students about even soft skills that we can't really teach in a classroom set setting as well, and because you can't test on that with EOC. But talk to them about soft skills. Many entre entrepreneurs were talking about how do you start your business, what advice they want to give them. They're anxious to come talk to students about that. They talk to the teachers when they say, this is what I'm teaching. They say, oh, I can come in and help with this project, or I have a better idea in engineering on how you might t teach this concept that you're teaching. So that connection with the partnerships is, are extremely important, and we have those, and they're very strong at Round Rock, in Round Rock. So our five academies, um, our, the endorsements in House Bill 5, there we go with the vocabulary, are embedded in our academies. So House Bill 5 was passed in 2013, I think it was signed in June or July 2013, and then they handed it over to all of the Texas, this is across the state of Texas, and handed it to each school district and said, here are our new rules, figure out how you're going to implement them into your school district, which is always a lot of fun. Fortunately, again, Round Rock being on the leading edge, we had already established academies, so we're, we're sitting in a beautiful position to support everything that they want all of the students to choose from. A lot of districts in the state of Texas are only going on the multidisciplinary endorsement, which means you take your four, your four core courses for four years and you earn an endorsement, taking just the four by fours, what the counselors call that. And that's still there for Round Rock. But we also have all of the other endorsements. And there are uh, performance acknowledgements too, which include some of the dual credit and the articulated credit, the college credit courses. There, I was online today looking at the UT. At the bottom I have, a, there's a UT video resource that if you go to, and that's a long, you can Google it. And it's in Spanish and in English, and there's some great videos. Again, this is Texas video. It's not specific to Round Rock, but it's a very good explanation if you want more information on what the heck is this House Bill 5, how does it affect things, and that, that's a very detailed. If you're a detailed person, you can go to there and find out more information. It did adjust graduation requirements a little. In fact, in Round Rock, it took away some of the graduation requirements for technology and some of the other things. It opens the student schedule for more of the career type courses that they can take, so that gives them more room. So endorsements are the specializations. They can choose their focus, which we have always called a program of study. So within business, we have architecture. We have business management. We have computer maintenance. Those are programs of study. And House Bill 5 has said, if you take three or more courses for four or more credits, 
in one concentrated area, you will earn an endorsement in blank, business and industry, in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, um, arts and humanities, public services. So there, it's like a, a major in college, if you will. And they can do more than one endorsement. They may get the multidisciplinary, and they may, may earn a STEM endorsement and an arts and humanity endorsement as well. So multiple ones. But they do have to complete one to graduate from high school. There are ways around that, and your counselor can talk to you about those, but I don't think that will ever apply to any, anybody in this room. Everyone will have that. That is on a transcript. That is not just a local recognition. Like the academies in the past, where they can buy a stole and wear it at graduation and then do certificates. This is on their high school transcript, and it puts on there what endorsements they have earned so that any colleges can see that they focused on STEM or they focused on arts and humanity, and, or multiple ones, and as well as their uh, achievements that they have, any extra achievements that, that they have. So this is just a real quick, I don't know that I need to go there. What, what's the same? We still have academies, we still have programs of study, they still take a sequence of courses. This has all been there in the past. What's new is that the current ninth graders and then your, our incoming ninth graders, which are your students here today, are affected by these endorsements and uh, they must make a choice now in eighth grade. The current ninth graders didn't do that. We were still trying to figure everything out, so they're making them now and they've already started, so that's kind of sloppy. But you have the great time now when you work with your counselors. You can choose the correct courses when they work with you on the four-year plans, which means you plan out your four years just like you did in college. You get through your first year or part way through your first year and change your mind about your second year, that's fine. You have a plan. You don't want to get to be a junior or senior, 11th or 12th grader and say, oh, I wish I had taken that in 10th grade. So they'll work with you on the plan. They're awesome on doing that. There's a lot of words there about what, how it's defined. I think I just told you, four, three more courses for four more credits. Performance acknowledgement, there's your advanced placement courses, your IB courses that um, Ms. Broche will talk to you about, ACT and SMT scores, language acquisition, there are a lot of ways to earn them other than just through academies, and your counselors will talk to you about that as well. So, I think I've already said that too. So, if you have any 10th, 11th, 12th graders, they're on the old plan unless they switch to the graduation plan, and again, they talk to their counselors about that. So, validated and strengthened and resolved to the Round Rock Academy, so we're even supported more than we ever have been before. There's a TEA website, also you can Google it. Um, I believe that Mari said she'll share this PowerPoint on the website here at Hopewell, so you can read through this and find these links if you're interested in that. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is have each of the academy leads talk to you about their academies generally, or quick, they'll go through a PowerPoint or talk to you about their academies, as well as the IB program and ROTC, and then after that, we'll move to the comments so you can ask specific questions that you may be interested in. So we will start with the Academy of Health Science. Because it's alphabetical. Oh wait, alphabetical is business. Oh, I'm sorry, David's mine. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at you. He's the long one in the center. My name is David Spike, and I'm the lead for the Business and Industry Academy. And, uh, nice to see such a big crowd here tonight. Um, I'm briefly just going to go over all the different uh, schools and academies we have uh, within the Business Academy. So, on top is the thing about endorsement, three, four classes, four credits, three classes. On the high school. So we have the School of Business, School of Communication, School of Agriculture, School of Information Technology, School of Hospitality and Tourism, and the School of Architecture. So within the School of Business, um, we have a uh, business management and administration, we have marketing and finance. 
And these are the classes that you would take for the business uh, management and administration. I'm not going to talk about them all. You're probably just interested in the first class. Just make sure you get any principles of business, marketing, and finance. Uh, for marketing, the same. Principles of business, marketing, and finance would be the first class. And finance, they're also going to start in the same class. So most of you will be in the first year. And FBLA is a student organization that um, really works well with the business department. And um, they'll be able to join that. And then we have lots of competitions uh, that they can enter and uh, go out of town and win some medals. Um, the School of Communications, we have debate and journalism. Journalism includes the yearbook and newspaper. On debate, you have to pretty much take debate one and professional communications the first year. Journalism one for yearbook and or photojournalism the first year. If they want to be in the newspaper or work on the newspaper rather, journalism one and photojournalism as well. And they would uh, compete at UIL competitions. They have uh, a big list link on the bottom there that would take you to most of the competitions we're offering. Um, School of Agriculture. So if they're interested in agriculture, they can do uh, agricultural mechanics or metal technologies, floral design. We have animal science and veterinarian medicine. On the side, you see some of the possible college credits that are available that you can take in high school and bring to you college. So if you're interested in agricultural mechanical, mechanics and metal technologies, principles of agriculture would be the first class. Floral design kind of starts in the 10th grade, but you would take principles and elements of floral design as your first class. Animal science, you're going to start with principles of agriculture for natural resources. Veterinary medicine. Principles of agriculture, food, and natural resources. And they would join the Future Farmers of America. They get to um, show off animals and uh, lots of competitions there as well. Uh, School of Information Technology, we do uh, computer maintenance and also digital media. In the digital media and animation strand, you would start in Principles of Information Technology. The rest of the classes in that strand. Um, computer maintenance, you're going to start with principles of information technology and move on to computer maintenance and networking and maybe a computer technician. That group would normally join Skills USA. They have a lot of competitions uh, for them in that group. School of Hospitality and Tourism. Starting there, you're going to take principles of hospitality and tourism, and then finish the rest of those classes to get an endorsement here. And you would join the FCCLA, Future Careers and Community Leaders of America. In the School of Architecture, we teach architecture and interior design. If you're going to start in architecture, you would start with principles of architecture and construction. Interior design would start in the same class, but then you'd start taking some more advanced interior design classes. And we normally compete at Skills USA. We also do uh, uh, different competitions, and whatever we can find. Really. And some of our students have won some good checks there. These are all the different um, possible certifications they can get. So um, you can test and get certified in quite a few different areas. And these are, this is throughout our academy. And these are all the different student organizations. And, uh, this is for a different. And then there's uh, ways you can help. Like they were saying, you could join our advisory committees. We're always looking for people to do um, presentations and talk to the kids about careers and stuff. So if you're interested in doing any of that, let us know. We'll get you there. Yeah. 
you have any questions, we'll have them out of Sports medicine, again, you have the same first two years. 
Um, and then they have Sports Med 1 and Sports Med 2, um, and that allows you to go and work with the trainers um, with all the different sports um, that Stony Point offers. Um, this sequence does not earn an endorsement, um, but it is still medicine related, so we've kept this in this program. And a lot of our students um, that are, say, in the practicum class, the farm tech, they also take a lot of the micropatho anatomy and physiology just because they have a genuine interest in it. Um, and so as long as they have four years in those health science courses, that will qualify them for that endorsement, with the exception of the two sports medicine courses. Um, and our student organization is HOSA. It's the Health Occupation Students of America. Um, we have a lot of fun in that um, club. Uh, last year, or this summer, I took five students. We went to nationals in Orlando, Florida. Disney World, and they actually, the biomedical debate team placed first in the nation. Um, so that was pretty amazing. Um, so we really encourage our students to compete. Um, they can earn scholarships. Um, we do a lot of community service and um, have different social events, and it's just a good way for students to meet other individuals who have similar interests as them. Um, and then this is just contact information. Um, again, Ms. Von Rosenberg will be outside, um, and she does the anatomy and physiology and micropath or those courses. Um, health science, um, there's a lot of us. Uh, Ms. Wagoner, wait for the back. Uh, she's our newest health science uh, teacher. Uh, she is a registered nurse. Uh, Ms. Grissom is also a registered nurse, and Mr. Johnson is a respiratory therapist. So we bring a lot of real world knowledge into the classroom, and they love our stories. and kind of things that we can bring, so it makes it interesting. And then um, the sports medicine, uh, the trainer at the school, his contact information there. And that is it. Yes. All right, and we will have a booth set up in the back outside if you have any questions.
while a woman's pregnant and all of the different things about the development of it. But then um, I actually teach the child guidance class, which is a year-long course, and that's about working with children. Okay, and um, it's a little bit of everything from the time they're, they're born until they're in middle school. Um, and we really, really, really have a good time in that class. And that is um, also uh, articulated, so you get an ACC credit for that class. Um, human services, I have here is just focused on careers that prepare individuals for uh, employment with families and human needs. And I'll kind of break it down a little bit more. Um, Ms. Lee teaches these classes um, um, at Stony Point this year, but Principles of Human Services is a whole credit, but you can kind of see that within our strands, it's a lot of the same um, classes. So a lot of the students that choose, say, um, education, they're also taking some of the human services classes. And um, the only thing that really changes on those is first your principles class and then the end. But in the middle, it's the same sequence as some of the other. Um, here is a lot of the different careers. I just put kind of like entry level careers that you could kind of look, even for both programs. Um, people that may, you know, students that may be interested in uh, child care um, worker or daycares and those types of things, and we'll have guest speakers that come in and speak about those. Um, but anywhere from, you know, psychologists, uh, elementary teachers, secondary, school counselors, speech therapists, they learn um, a lot about all of the different careers that go with that. Um, here are the ones that are articulated. Lifetime Wellness and Nutrition is a semester class, but you do get it, it is articulated for ACC credit. And then, of course, Child Guidance, um, and then Instructional Practice and Education and Training. Um, two of our organizations that we have, um, I'm actually the advisor for FCCLA. Um, it's a really awesome program, and if hmm, you are around my age, when I was in school, it was known as FHA. Um, which is now, it's changed and it's FCCLA because they wanted to encompass everyone. Um, and so future career community leaders, we went to um, Corpus Christi last year to a state competition and all of the medals and the different things that they did. And it was really, really a good time for the students because most of the students that I took um, had never been to a beach before. And so they thought it was the coolest thing ever and then they got to see a lot of um, students from all of the states. Um, TAPI is what they call us for Texas Association of Future Educators. So for those students that know very good and well they want to be in education, then that's a really strong and good program. I think that that is it. I will be out here and I am manning uh, two tables. So um, I actually do, uh, teach all the hospitality and tourism uh, that's in the business and industry. And so um, I will be out there with hospitality tourism, but I'll also have all the information for public services and a brochure. It has everything that I just covered for you out there, and then also personal hospitality. So if you don't know what hospitality is, please stop by and talk to me because we do have an off-campus program where uh, students get to job shadow and go work at the Marriott off of La Frontera. And so uh, a lot of times people never know that this is offered and Stony Point is the only school in Round Rock that offers that program. So I will be up there as well. Before to take the first class in computer science, you do need to be taking Algebra 1 now. And if you haven't taken it, we can talk. So right now we are having Computer Science 1 as a regular computer or a project legal way, which is a national program. Uh, then after you take the first computer science, then you can take AP or you can take uh, IB. Then you can take Computer Science 3, Independent Studies, and I just petitioned for us to start having uh, game, gaming, because most students are always asking, what is gaming, gaming? So I say, instead of playing games, we're going to create them. Because what we want to do in computer science, we want to turn all the students at Stony Point to be creators of technology and not only consumers, because that's where the market is. And I'll show you that in PowerPoint in a minute. Then the other strand we have is engineering. To start engineering, again, you do need to have some math background. 
So you need to be thinking about that. If you can take it somewhere, you can prove to us that you're doing good in math, then you can be able to start uh, going in introduction to engineering. Most of those classes in engineering are all project lead the way. Project lead the way are national, so whatever people are learning in Texas, let's say you have to move and go somewhere else in the country, you'll find the same classes. They are all endorsed and, they are, and most of them do give you college credit. All right, in, uh, so that, those are the ones you would take, the principles of engineering, digital electronic, aerospace, civil engineering, and engineering design. And John Peterson will be out there explaining about that. So I just wanted to tell you just a little bit more about computer science because there's a lot of confusion when it comes to computer science. What I found out when I, I'm a former uh, programmer, I, work, I programmed for 15 years before I decided to teach, and what I have found is many students come along to me and tell me, I'm ready to computer science, and I ask, what language did you write? And most of them tend to tell me, oh, I took PowerPoint, and I did digital media or something, and I'm like, no, that is using application. You're building application, you're not doing computer science. In computer science, we write code. So we write code either in Java, in Scratch, in Python, and several other languages. And really, most industries right now, if you can code, you will have a job. So uh, computer science is not dead. Computer science is not being. And computer science is not information technology. So if you have students and they're coming and telling you, oh, mom, I want to take, or dad, I want to take computer science, and then they tell you, this is the time I want to take the class. You have to make sure that ah, it is computer science. Because computer science, again, like I said, sorry, it's there. It's upside down. So over there we're saying, keep coming, keep programming. Because why do you need to take computer science? Uh, because uh, what do you imagine a computer scientist to be? Are they an artist? Yes, they are. Are they? Uh, and a fashion designer, yes they are. Are they architects? Yes they are. Because all those fields, no matter what field you want to go to today, it's computer based. Fashion design, uh, medicine, we'll show you before, before computer programming, you could not have DNA uh, determined because it had to take software for it to be broken down. Yes, they did do the chemical part, but we needed programming. So computer science, like I said before, it's not the our principles of technology, it's computational thinking, making computers stick faster than we can. All right? So when you come, why should you do all this or something? Because you can make your own game. Yeah? Instead of playing, I just play them, you can make it. These are all the different kind of languages we can have. Uh, reasons, it's practical. There are many jobs. I just had my advisory meeting the other day and the part one lady from IBM said right now they have 200 jobs and they don't have anyone to fill them. I mean practically they've looked everywhere and they have already reached their H1B visa. You can find out what that is. So they can't bring any other foreigners right now until next year. So they have jobs that cannot be filled. So if you want to create music, you want to create any other thing, you want to change the world, you say, I want to be a doctor to change the world. I'm not saying you don't become a doctor, but a programmer saves a lot of people at an hour, while a doctor saves one person at a time. So you may want to consider that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look at this. This is statistics that just came out last month. Those are all the jobs in, uh, in science. In STEM, those are all the jobs. 16% are for computer science, but look how many students are getting a degree in computer science. There is no way to fill those jobs. Those, that information just came out last week in uh, we Wanna Code. So there is demand. Uh, they said by 2020, that means six years from now, we are going to be lacking a million programmers in this country. So I am so determined, and that's why when people ask me, why are you just teaching? I said, I'm teaching because I want to produce the next generation of programmers. I'm very determined to do that. And especially girls. The best programmers are girls. <laughs> All right, so yes, yeah, so that's another reason why it's cool. Like I said, DNA, any movie, 
no matter what movie you're watching, it's programming in it these days. It's not all human-based. It's in programming, it's in digital electronics. So engineering, a lot of students uh, say, oh, I'm not gonna take programming, I'm gonna go into engineering. And then they come back and tell me, I'm required to take three classes of programming in college. So you're required to take it. It doesn't matter most majors in science and engineering, you're gonna take programming. Uh, so that's what I was, uh, I was saying. If you have any questions, find me out there. And Mr. Peterson again will talk to you about engineering and I'll talk to you more about computer science. The organizations that we have at TAME, Texas Alliance of Minority Engineers, everybody's welcome. We have Skills USA, we have National Technical Honor Society, and also we have, uh, we have Computer Science UIL, and we have Computer Science Application. Last year, my student went to CODE, and uh, all the students who went, they did UT, a and RISE, they produced the best application. So it can be done. All of you can program it if you want to. So I hope you come see me again. Good evening. My name is Andre Clark. I'm the choir director at Stony Point High School, and I'm here to just talk to you about the Visual and Performing Arts Academy at Stony Point. This is the first year for the VPA on our campus. We've only had VPA uh, in Round Rock ISD at two schools for the, uh, the past number of years uh, over at Westwood, and then it's uh, Cedar Ridge if you're on the east side. Happy to say that all of the schools now have a Visual and Performing Arts Academy on each campus because we value the arts and value the, the role that it plays in helping develop your students into students that are not only just visual and performing arts students, but also STEM, BPA, and, uh, and uh, health science uh, students. Um, how many of you have a student that wants to go to college? How many of you have? You raise your hand if you want your student to go to college. Great. Awesome. You can be a visual and performing arts academy student and also be in another academy. How many of you think that it would be really great if your student could get into the engineering program at fill in the blank, your favorite university period ever because they have a great football team and they also want to get some really great, I don't know, money at the end of their college degree? Raise your hand if you want your students to be gainfully employed when they graduate from college. Super, I'm seeing lots of hands raised, that's great. In order to get into the college that you want them to get into, they're going to have to fill out some applications. And one of the things that they're going to look at when they're trying to decide between your student and someone else is all of the things that they were involved in while they were also in high school, learning about STEM, learning about how to be a certified nurse's assistant, learning how to be involved in computer programming, learning how to write code so that they can write make the next cool movie uh, that uh, Matthew McConaughey is going to star in. Okay, all of those things are very important. We want your students that are involved in our program to be very well-rounded students. They can be involved in AP, they can be involved in IP. We encourage those students to be involved in all of those programs and you can do it, but you have to be very smart and you have to be able to work your schedule over the four-year plan. To be a visual and performing arts student, you have to meet one criteria. You have to be involved in four sequential arts programs through your, your high school career. That means you can take choir for four years and you're done. If you're a band student, your student's involved in band. If they take band for four years, they can get that endorsement. If you've got a student who wants to be a triple threat, would like to be involved in the musicals, would like to be involved in other things, like they're strongly involved in dance and they're strongly involved in um, visual art, can they do that? Yes, they can. Four visual arts in, se in sequence, or four performing arts, and those can be from two strings. You can do choir for three years and dance for one year. If you're really, really wise about your planning, if you'll look, you're going to get all these things, and they've got all these different, you know, if you're involved in whatever program, you've got to take these sequence of classes. You also have to add in your core classes on top of that. If you're very, very wise and you get a little guidance on that, you can find certain classes that will double up. 
Let's say that your student wants to be in theater and likes to dance. You have to take a PE class at some point during your high school career. Dance will count as your PE class. So finding, finding things that your students are very, very involved in and want to be involved in the visual performing arts or uh, and STEM. Uh, Ms. Karayuki uh, said something really nice about programming music and programming things to be involved in, in movies. I, I love that. If you don't ever go into a music class, how are you going to write music for a movie? If you don't understand the concepts of balance that you would gain in an art class, an art one class, how would you ever be able to draw something really nice for an architecture class? So the fine arts are not just an extracurricular, we are curricular courses of study that will help you get your students involved not only in the high school, but because of their involvement in the programs in the high school, it gives them some leverage when they're going into college, when they're writing out their essays to become uh, incoming freshmen at, at some great schools, and by their involvement and being involved in extracurricular, being involved in patterns or, or courses of study over a long period of time, it's going to help them be more marketable to the colleges that you want to get them into. And I'm talking Ivy League, I'm talking um, Texas State, uh, we're talking a and um, Keep them involved in the visual and performing arts. It's choir, band, orchestra, dance, theater, uh, and then the visual arts. Um, you know, you take art one and then you have a myriad number of different courses that you can take, sculpture, uh, and, and several other things we can certainly talk about and chat about. There are far too many to put up on the, on the wall, but I have a big chart you can take home. Uh, there are lots of organizations that we have uh, for our art students, um, TFME, Texas Future Music Educators, ITS, International Thespian Society. Uh, students that are involved in art go to the face competitions in the spring, and uh, lots of things for them to be involved in all year long for four years, and it keeps them busy, and also you can be a STEM kid and be in Required. You can be a health science student and want to go be a really, you know, work on your pre-med and also be someone who plays piano or plays harp and orchestra. There's lots of ways to be involved in multiple activities and we want to encourage those students uh, to, if you're declaring a STEM major, we would certainly love you to be a music minor. So, again, thank you, Visual Performing Arts. I'll be out there to answer any questions you might have about where to go from, from uh, as, a, as a freshman. So, thanks. I'm the Ivy coordinator at Stony Point High School. So you've heard about all of these wonderful academies that we have at Stony Point. And Ivy is something a little bit different than an academy. It's actually a two-year program that students enter in the 11th and 12th grade. Or actually, they enter in the 11th grade and they complete it in the 12th grade. International Baccalaureate. Baccalaureate sounds scary, doesn't it? It's not, it just means course of study. So this is an internationally recognized course of study. There are 4,000 IB diploma program schools in the world. We're linked to all of them by a similar set of uh, curricular areas. So Danny, if you wanna go ahead and go up there to course components, IB at SPHS. This is our Stony Point IB website. You can get to it at stonypointiv.com. So here under course curricular requirements, the core of IB is something called the extended essay and theory of knowledge and creativity, action, and service. And I can tell you about all of those things, but I have a whole bunch of kiddos back there. Wave at them, they're in the back corner. They're going to talk to you because I feel like it comes out better when it comes from a kid. So they're going to talk to you about the core of the program, but I want to show you that IB is kind of like the Olympics of high school. So if you are one of those super motivated kiddos and you have grit and determination and you want to challenge yourself not in just one class, but in all six subject areas, then IB might be the thing for you. So we have a little video that we want to show you. I know you've been sitting for a while. I promise it's only five minutes. It's going to show you the international nature of the IB program and uh, just give you a little more insight. And then I'm going to call my students up and we're going to do a little question and answer. So go ahead and take a look at this. Gracias. 
sort of everywhere in the world, you know, when that is not working professionally. And I think that Nike is preparing them for the future they're going to have. So what I'm going to have you guys do, are you guys okay taking a deep breath? Wow, there's a lot of you. Keep going, keep going. I'm going to give you like 20 seconds to answer a question. So you're going to uh, introduce yourself. Wait a minute, you're just in here. Right away from you're going to introduce yourself and you're going to answer a question. Okay. So your question is, how has the IV program prepared you for college? Well, I'm Justin, and the IB program is preparing me for college by really teaching me how much work colleges will give me. It's helping me see that the courses are rigorous and that you have to learn a lot of new skills. Time management is one of the biggest factors, and you really get to learn that as you go through IB. Nice to Amazing, right? So wait till you hear the rest of them. We're really going to impress you. So go ahead, Danny. What's CAS? Um, my name is Danny, and um, CAS is Creativity, Action, and Service. And so this is like a little side project um, that you do aside from IB. And um, the next part will be her job. Okay, so what are you going to do now? We had a little technical glitch there. Something happened. Creativity, action, and service. You told them what it was. It's more than a side project, actually. It's um, trying to get kids to be all well-rounded when they finish high school. So there are three components, creativity, action, and service. So how are you doing creativity, Danny? Um, so I'm in HL art. You get like your HLs and your SL classes. So um, my HL is art. And so some of the creativity things that I've been doing is that um, about like every week or so, I practice my drawing skills and enter as uh, creativity hours. And so uh, throughout the year, I'll build up some hours for creativity through my art. My name is Ashley, and I'm in both ROTC and ME, well, obviously. And parts of CAS, one of it, action. One thing is like things for CAS that you can do, like basically, it's kind of like doing volunteer hours and stuff. And in RGC, we have like a lot of like volunteer opportunities throughout the year, and that counts for class. Hi, my name's Eduardo. <laughs> uh, um, let me see, service, right? Service, service is uh, part of the class where you have to service the community somehow. Like us right now, teaching or talking about our IV lives to kiddos. Uh, okay, <laughs> Alright, the next question is how does CAS help you prepare for college and career? Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ariel and um, I think CAS really prepares you for careers and everything because there's more than just actually doing your job. There are, you know, going out and doing stuff like this, going out to present something. People, you people that you're trying to recruit for stuff. Okay. All right, Luca, what's your favorite aspect of the IB program? You have to introduce yourself too. Hi, everyone. My name is Luca, and my favorite part about IB, aside from the homework, of course, um, is the way we're taught in the classroom. Instead of just given facts and expected to absorb them, like without questioning them, we're given facts and told why these things happen and why a chain of events happen. Like in history, we're not just told to read the textbook, we're told to read the textbook and like why a series of events happened. And to me, that's the best way that I could learn. Wait a minute, you're next. Tell me, what's your favorite part of the IB program? So, um, my name is Landon. Um, so, um, I really like IB because it has a lot of benefits, like um, preparing you for college, um, college credit, things like that. But definitely one of my um, favorite aspects of it is the unity of it because we're all we're all in the same classes. We're all doing the same, well, for the most part, we're in the same classes, but we're all doing most of the same things. So we can all relate to each other in the work we're doing and um, if 
between hell we can go to each other and you know like 95% of the time we're getting along and you know other other times we're all really stressed and we get a little bit cranky but you know we're all we're all really good we really are really good friends um, so just the unity is like it's, it's really nice continues to the end next year, we were going to go over the summer, and it gets sent into the IV, people in like Timbuktu and Singapore, and they read it and they say, oh, this person did a really good job, and they give us a degree, and we get to graduate. Um, but we get to do really in-depth research on whatever interests us. You don't have to do it about something you did learn in class, although that doesn't help. You have some alter all other knowledge. I know I'm going to do mine about comparative religions which isn't something you learn in high school, that's more of a college level course, and I get to do a bunch of in-depth research and just really explore something that I enjoy, and then I get to write a really long paper about it, and it becomes one of the reasons that I get my diploma, and one of the reasons I get to graduate IV, it's really cool. Aren't they amazing? is that if you graduate with the Ivy Diploma, uh, you automatically get 24 credits to any in-state uh, academic institution. Now, to get that diploma, you have to take very rigorous exit exams. So they study six subjects over the course of two years, and then they have very comprehensive exams at the end. Um, those exams cost a bit of money, and so that's another thing that you have to plan for if you join the IV. We also provide financial assistance. And lots of colleges look at these kiddos and they say, wow, those are well-rounded citizens of the world. We want them now, right? <laughs> like, bring them to my school now. Um, for instance, just the other day, Georgetown said, I'll fly you to Georgetown for free, Ms. Brochet, just if you'll come let your students know about Georgetown. Right, that's how in demand, no you don't. Actually, I'm not going, I'm staying with you guys, but, <laughs> but that's how in demand Ivy students are. So um, they are, they are um, what's the word, um, recruited, and they're also interesting, yes, but they're recruited by in universities near and far. So if you're interested in the Ivy program, it's stonypointivy.com. And again, it's like the Olympics of high school, so it's not for everybody, but at Stony Point, this is really rare. Anybody can get in if they want to. Most schools that offer IB, there's an application process. It's more like a school within a school. That's not the case at Stony Point. It's open to anybody who wants to try. So thank you very much. We are a Navy program, however, uh, the way the program is structured, they allow at least one Marine instructor, and that would be me. Um, there's a couple of things I want you to know walking away about ROTC. One of them is that we are not trying to recruit your child into the military. We are structured that way. We are sponsored by the United States Navy. However, trust me, I could not care less whether they go in the military or not. I'm more interested in their character development and possibly getting them into college or at least put them on a path towards success in life. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint, it's like IB, I brought people. Uh, so I'm gonna cut mine short. I'm gonna turn it over to a young man who's in his fourth year of ROTC. He is our executive officer, which means he's number two in command. This is Cadet Lieutenant Roman Zepeda. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cadet Lieutenant Zepeda, and I am the executive officer at Stony Point High School. Here at Stony Point High School, the Naval ROTC organization offers your child many opportunities to enhance their leadership and followership skills. 
like uh, like Chris Archer said, this is my fourth year at, in ROGC, and it has completely changed my life. Obviously, ROGC also offers you many opportunities to get involved within your community. Just recently, we were involved at Robertson's Field Day event. It was an extreme success. And that's always good in giving back within your community, and we like to practice that. ROGC offers off, also offers many opportunities to go on field trips and drill meets. You will be able to compete against many other Navy, Navy ROTC units within your state. And you can join the athletic team, academic team,